you very much for having me here and for organizing this very interesting workshop. So I'm going to present this paper, Gender Fair Post Editing a Case Study Beyond the Binary, which I uh, wrote together with my co-supervisor, Dr. Kroman from the University of Vienna. Um, and this is part of my doctoral thesis. So I'm a PhD at the University of Graz. And this publication is uh, to be found in the proceedings of the 24th European Association for Machine Translation, and it will be published also in the um, ACL anthology. So I would like to show you this video to talk about the importance of this research. I hope you can hear it. Hopefully. Welcome. What's everybody's name? I'm Danny. My pronouns are she and her. Sid, my pronouns are they and them. I'm Margot, pronouns Z and Zer. I'm Penelope. My thoughts are not and what? Seriously, what is happening? Because some people are gender non conforming, they have certain preferred pronouns. Ah, I am Lydia. Pronouns Lydia. Okay, so translating this scene could be very tricky in other languages, for example, in German and Italian, because you need um, always to mention gender. And in some languages, for example, Italian, there are actually no gender neutral or gender inclusive pronouns. So uh, we see nowadays many non-binary individuals in TV series. And so the conception of what gender fair language is is constantly evolving. And we also know, as I've just mentioned, that there are differences in the grammatical structure of languages. And in the case of translation, I come from translation studies, um, we are starting to increasingly use machine translation and therefore post-editing, but we know that um, machine translation outputs are biased. So my questions were, how do language professionals use gender fair language? Are there differences in effort among different approaches? And also, can machine translation be a viable solution to produce gender fair translations and possibly also gender fair data sets to perform then um, the biasing of machine translation? So the problem is um, when we look at German that we have different approaches to gender fair language. Um, here are examples to translate the gender neutral noun actor. Um, so we have the possibility to reword sentences as in other languages. So we could use passive construction, we could use neutral nouns, we could use indefinite pronouns and so on. In the case of actors, we could say in German, Schauspieltalent, so a talent in acting. Uh, then there is another strategy, another approach, which is um, quite common in German speaking country is to use um, gender inclusive characters. So we separate the male form Schauspieler, the male actor, um, from the female form with this um, asterisk, it's called gender star in, in German, and it's pronounced as a brief pause, so Schauspieler in. Um, and then we have the possibility to use um, other um, suffixes or forms. Um, so as in the case of Schauspielix, gender neutral actor, that would be, these forms are not very common, they're used more in activist contexts. And then we also have the possibility to use new systems, in which case we introduce a fourth gender because um, the German language has female, male, and neuter. So that would be Schauspielens. And this suffix would be then a gender fair ending to talk about non binary people or also people in plural to avoid masculine generics. So, um, what did I do? I um, recruited six professional translators. And I asked them to manually post editing three English to German machine translations. The texts were about non-binary actors joining the cast of different TV series. Um, and they received a set of instructions. Um, and some instruction concerned the uh, Jennifer language approach to use. So in the first text, we tested this approach here, the rewarding. In the second, the inclusive characters. And in the third, the new system. So, uh, the method was non-participant observation, that is, I um, made notes on the translation 
or at suppose editing process, I recorded the screen of the um, professional translators, and then I also conducted with them retrospective interviews, so post-study interviews about the process, their solutions, their challenges, and so on. And also, I annotated the translation to look at which strategies were used, how, and where they made mistakes or not. So here in, in, this present, in this presentation and in the paper, I focus on the temporal and cognitive effort and also on the product analysis, so the uh, translation. So I had six participants aged from um, 25 to about 60. I didn't find any um, non-binary people. I had just one in my study and it was in another study because I, I performed a post-editing study, which is the object of this uh, presentation. And then I also performed a translation studies. And in that group, I had a non-binary person, but here I couldn't find any, sadly. Um, Austria is a very uh, small country and we have we don't have so many professional translators and I wanted a combination of professional translators and also people of all gender. So. Um, they all had, as you can see, more than three years of translation experience and experience in post-editing, also some experience in gender fair language, and quite everyone uh, already uses gender fair language, mostly gender inclusive characters, and as I said, this is the most common strategy at the moment. And here we have the ratings, so people thought that the use of gender fair language is easy or they had neutral attitudes, um, and only a few said very easy or difficult. So, okay, um, when we look at the temporal effort, so the translation times, um, we see, so, sorry, um, we see that generally uh, new systems took longer for professional translators, but there are great differences among participants. And we can see because uh, also the relative standard deviation is quite high. So, um, Basically, we didn't find uh, statistically significant uh, differences among the uh, temporal effort for these three um, strategies. Sorry, I don't know why it's... Okay. And as regards the cognitive effort, so we asked to talk about the different strategies, the solutions, and so on. And so um, most of the participants thought that gender-inclusive characters are the easiest strategy to be used uh, because usually male and female forms can be concatenated with a character, but they had concerns regarding the readability because then we could have a text with many, many characters and this could affect readability negatively also because also the reading flow. Um, and they thought that gender neutral rewarding is quite easy, but it is at fourfold to find neutral alternatives as in the case of actor and very simple words, which can be directly translated here. The effort is to think about other ways or to restructure sentences in order to avoid gender. And most of the participants thought that the new systems are the most difficult approach to Jennifer language because they are completely new and they had never used it before. Um, and they were also cognitively overwhelmed um, so that they had little attention left for the rest of the translation, the post-editing task. Um, and um, the outputs of the machine translation were found to be good and comprehensible, but obviously, as you can expect, the were male generics and um, non-binary characters were misgendered. Um, nevertheless, translators had the feeling that speed and productivity increased. So here, if we look at the, at the translation analysis, so I had um, in the first text um, nine gendered expressions in the, um, in the third 10. So I had about, they were about 10, just to summarize, about 10 um, gender phrases for each text. And so I look at what they, what they did. In the first case, people could be very creative, so we're rewarding, so we have the use of neutral words, rewarding, people omitted pronouns, repeated names, and so on. Um, and I did not find many mistakes, only once misgendering out of the 54 expressions analyzed and once male, uh, once, um, male generics were used. In the second case, people opted for gender star, as in the case of gender inclusive characters. So using der, die Schauspieler in, this would be the actor, um, but they applied it differently. For, um, for example, this is the male article and that's, sorry, that's the female. 
article. So uh, they some changed the order and some opted for a different concatenation. So they were people were not consistent, and some other used the column, which is an also also another strategy which is sometimes sometimes to be found. Um, I just found as mistake twice many generics, and in the case of the third test. Um, people opted for the Silva system, which is this specific new system, uh, and an actor would be translated to Einin Schauspielernin. So four people selected this, and the explanation was um, because this system is very complete, so it has a very um, developed set of grammar rules. Um, one person selected the ends forms, which would be einen Schauspielens. This is um, actually very easy because the suffix ends is used as pronoun, as article, as suffix. And then another person used this nona system, eins Schauspielerin, which also mixes a bit of, uh, of the previous approach. But in this case, I found um, in every translation once misgendering, and that was because uh, the um, term nanny was to be translated, and that's very specific. And also um, 17 mistakes in the application of the system, meaning that people used the pronouns in the wrong form or, or made mistakes in the declensions and so on. Um, so what's the take home message? Uh, gender inclusive characters are the most, are the easiest approach to utilize and mostly because they are already common in German speaking countries. Uh, the problem is that people have to think about male and female forms, so these forms probably do not cha challenge the gender binary. Um, gender neutral rewarding requires substantial creativity, but it is a feasible approach when gender does not play an important role, because some observations were that um, text written with rewarding uh, reads very impersonal. Um, and new systems are actually difficult. People uh, tend to make more mistakes because obviously they don't know them, uh, but there is a scarce impact on productivity, meaning that through training, people could get accustomed and it could be, uh, and they could also improve their um, competencies when using the systems. Um, the preference of the language professional in this case were um, to use a mix of rewarding and gender inclusive characters because these are the most common strategies. Um, and also they thought that um, machine translation is a viable option for producing gender fair translations. So we um, saw that they were very content with the outputs and felt that the productivity increased. So this would be as I said, a viable solution also for possible um, devising. And that these are the results in a nutshell. Um, and so if you have questions, then feel free to ask, and I'm very happy to answer them. All right, I think we have time for probably about one question. Anyone have a question? Um, thank you. Very interesting talk. I have a quick question about the um, new systems versus the gender star, uh, the gender inclusive character options. Um, do you think that this is that the the star is easier for the translator simply because it is more popular, like it has been around for longer, or do you think it is inherently easier? for the speakers to process than the neo systems or like are the neo systems cognitively difficult inherently in some way or is it just lack of familiarity i think both a bit uh, in part what's easy when using gender inclusive characters is that you simply use the form you already have in the german language meaning the male and the female so you just have to concatenate them with a character so in the case of neo system it could be at the beginning uh, they are new, so new endings, and this would be cognitively uh, difficult to process. And um, it really also depends, I think, on the on the target. So maybe language professionals are used also to uh, adapt their text to different specifications. So if we look at the times, we didn't find great differences. Uh, it should be interesting to look at other groups 
for example, German is not my first language. My first language is Italian. And so with some system, I struggled because you just need so many grammatical rules. Um, so I think there are, in some cases, some new systems are more difficult, but because you have to learn new rules. Um, but there are some which are quite easy. And I think in this case, it's really, you know, the training and the constant use that makes the difference. So it's a bit of both. Thank you. I just think about 